So that was an Allegretto, number 22, from Giuliani's Opus 50. Follow the lesson for free. We're going to be talking about ascending and descending slurs and second position playing a little bit. But um, if you're interested, I do have an edition of all 32 works in Opus 50, and there's a link for that in the description. So the original publication for this is very inconsistent with the slur markings. So there's, there's only a few options there. Either it's a copy error in the original publication, um, or Giuliani just um, wasn't consistent. He just, you know, didn't write the slurs consistently. Or he wants us to um, sometimes play slurs and sometimes not and make them sound similar. I think that's unlikely, uh, but that is a good pedagogical, you know, reason that I could say. But that's probably unlikely. It's probably just kind of like a copy error in the original. In mine, um, I may have fixed one or two, but I generally have left it the way Giuliani's original is just because um, I'm publishing all 32. Uh, but nevertheless, because of these video lessons, I can talk about it a little bit now. So he's a little bit inconsistent uh, with where he adds the slur markings. So for example, in the first bar there, you know, he does slurs on both of those figures, but then in bar five, he, he doesn't. So either he's just starting the piece with more slurs or he's, or it's just missing. Um, my recommendation to you is add slurs where you think they should occur. Um, personally, um, I think that you can just play it the way I've, I've written it in the score. It works out just fine that way. Um, but you could also decide to, if you wanted to, if you wanted to make it very ultra consistent, just slur the first group. So always just slur, play, slur, 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 slur. slur. So, you know, by just doing the first group of each quarter note when it's appropriate, um, then you can make it really consistent. This discussion is, is kind of not, it's not hugely important for most people, I think. But if, if that bothers you, that you see an inconsistency there, feel free to correct it. I think it's completely valid and, and whatever choice you make is, is just fine. So this piece is, is often used as a, uh, a slur etude. I don't think it's specifically a, a slur etude. It's just a little piece from, from Opus 50, but certainly it works really well as one. There's lots of different combinations and there are mostly um, closed slurs. So you're, you're mainly playing in second position here. So your whole hand is over in second position and you have this kind of uh, finger stance on these frets. So as you're playing it, just make sure you're, you're really nicely aligned in the left hand so that you can reach all those slurs with ease. It goes to first position sometimes. And then you're always kind of springing, springing out of it. So just, just be mindful of that. One way that you can also practice is you can practice it just the, just the melodic notes, the upper notes, without the bass notes, just to work on the on the musical line. Um, if you're working specifically on the on the slurs, feel free to like repeat them. So, Sometimes when we do repetitions, the, the, each repetition gets a little cleaner. We clean up our slurs because we first time we play it, it's not perfect, and then we, we kind of correct it. So by doing repetitions like that, you can encourage your hand to play the slurs correctly or more cleanly more often. And that's one way to, to work on the technique, right? But uh, another aspect of this piece is just playing really smooth lines and making sure that when you're not slurring um, a figure, you know that it, it is pretty smooth. The slurs are going to sound smoother because they slurs by their very nature um, facilitate legato, so they will sound smooth. But you want the other notes to sound really smooth as well. So just in the right hand, making sure you're gliding through the string, not stopping the string too early or pre-planting on the string. Um, anything that would cut 
or reduce the, the legato um, sustain, right? So besides that, let's just do a little walkthrough of the piece and I can talk about a couple of the, the oddities that occur. I'll go nice and slow. Here, third finger, so two and one can play there. See there, I accidentally slurred the second group in bar five, but it's it's not marked. Here, I, I only use my thumb on the down stems. So even though I'm playing on the fourth string, I save my thumb for just the last bass there. section there, so for bar 10, you do a bar chord there, start with a bar chord here, otherwise you'd have to jump the first finger over or something, so just go right into a, a, a bar on the second fret there, just to smoothly transition through there. on the rest and then you start again here use your fourth finger you can mute that bass too or it, it's probably an indication that you know you can let go of the bass note because it's a little it's a little bit of a stretch there but nothing serious of course I decided to do like a little hinge bar here so my first finger is hinged and I'm playing the C sharp with my second finger so I can slide it into the next chord you don't have to do that you could do it you know you could play the A chord like that and the D chord like that however you choose to do it it's not super fast so it's not really necessary to choose one or the other that's just how I chose to do it in order to get that line as smooth as possible in the in the last note of each group. 